Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Artcasters number 91. I'm here as always with Joshua Kimball. Hello. And uh, we have a special guest, as always, in our rotating third chair, a uh, returning guest. It was such a really so uh, our returning guest, our third chair, is Scott Campbell. Hey, Scott. How you doing? And uh, what was what was really cool was the first time you, we had you on. We just got such a I think positive response from you being on. Oh, um, that's great. And, it, and I, I kind of noticed watching your channel that I I think we brought some people over to you because I noticed a lot of the people that kind of followed us found found you from there and then they started following you there. And I think once once somebody like sees you or gets to know you, they they, they kind of want to see. Oh man, I gotta I gotta hear more more from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of why we wanted to have you on. Um, so I thought you know you do a whole bunch of different stuff, Scott. And uh, so I, I'm always curious when people are sort of in some ways like jacks of all trades and art, how they how they kind of ba balance all that. Um, so I thought we could talk a little bit about that, and we'll just kind of segue off because I know you've always got really entertaining stories and everything, and you've been doing this for a while. So um, there's probably probably nothing you haven't seen or done. So we could talk about that. But I'm just curious because you've got um, you do the window painting, and we talked a little bit about that last time, and uh, you you've done some uh, like clown work, some entertaining, and you also have kind of. It sounds like you've kind of restarted something you were doing before with the this thing called Dark Ride, which you also have a, a YouTube channel for that, as well as your window painting. But so so Dark Ride, explain to us a little bit about the, what Dark Ride is, and uh, and then I'm again I'm kind of curious how you balance all this different stuff. Well, I think the main thing is uh, it's all about getting my needs met as far as you know uh, my driving needs like creativity, recognition uh learning and growth different things so you know they take different forms so really the it's just the the driving needs behind them that are that i go after like creativity and recognition but recognition not as much or as as when i was clowning and doing stuff definitely i backed off from that but uh so because my need was always recognition uh that's why i started doing art cars and and developing them and I've I've been doing our cars for probably 30 years and uh, in different forms <clears throat> and so about two and a half years ago I stopped performing as much and that's when I started teaching on YouTube more teaching window painting and art and uh, I sort of dropped out of the whole street performing clown thing and uh, so I stopped driving my van and uh, I wasn't seeking attention all the time like I was in previous years and so uh the van i had was called Vantasticus, and it was you know kind of a a mystical sort of i guess i don't know indiana jones looking crazy van with all types of characters and this and that and uh, I, I never did finish it completely but i was getting close but uh, so it's anyway it's been sitting for a couple years and then i decided i wanted to sell it and uh, I thought to myself, who's going to want to buy this, you know, this creation, you know, and, and I started thinking about it and I thought uh, that the haunt industry would be really interested in using it as a promotional vehicle that they could use to promote their, their haunted houses or their haunt events. I mean, they're so huge. Some of these, these haunt events back east, like in Indiana and stuff and different states and, uh, so I decided to change the theme of it. So now that's where I came up with Dark Ride Nightmare on Wheels, Van of a Thousand Skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Had to add that. Van of a Thousand Skulls. <laughs> I mean, the, the, title, the title keeps getting longer and longer. Dark Ride Nightmare on Wheels, Van of a Thousand Skulls. <laughs> Yeah, it's like dark ride, nightmare on wheels, van of a thousand skulls, the creepiest van in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's like keep adding to it, but uh, but I thought that would be noteworthy because one of the things that's going to have it has a big giant three foot head vampire god. It kind of looks like an androgynous version of me, and <laughs> can have a waterfall of blood and a pond oh, on man. top of the van, <laughs> and then. Uh, 
I've got these two big skulls I'm working on now. I'm, I'm doing the molds and everything. And I thought I could use those to dump dry ice in those, you know, or something if it was parked. But uh, so anyway, I changed the name of it and I'm just working on it again and kind of set about a year or a year and a half. I should have it completed because I'm, I'm utilizing a lot of the stuff that's on there already. Like there was a dinosaur on the hood and I just added horns to it. I got the horns and you know made it look like a dragon and uh all these like appendages coming off it and it's got two hands coming out of the hood like it's busting out of the hood and so the hood's really coming along good this weekend i worked on this back corner piece it's a it looks like a it's a tree character with a nose coming out and it's like screaming and i added some new pieces and and uh, i just spent i just bought uh five gallons of black latex rubber that i'm using wow. i've been buying like resin and i've been taking the money from my uh paypal because i i sold probably about close to 900 dollars worth of ebooks you know my ebook my little 12 dollar uh -huh. ebook i've sold about 70 of these since november which is exciting so but uh, I've been using that money to buy materials to work on the van. So I expect to I expect to sell it. And uh, at which time I'm probably going to go into more a different form of sculpting. I really love sculpting and I want to do a, maybe not the dark stuff quite as much. But right now I'm really into doing the dark stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you, I, I was watching your videos. You were saying that the the black latex you were getting from a place. The reason why they had the black latex was because they did a lot of the effects for the Batman movies. Yeah, they actually developed. I think it's, I think it's a company called Monster Makers. They actually made the black latex specifically because, uh, you know, the people that were doing Batman, they needed a lot of, you know, they needed that. Yeah. For all the stuff and, so yeah. I just thought, oh, I'll get, I'll have some of the black, you know, why not? The black latex. And uh, yeah, it works fine. It's just black instead yeah. of the regular flesh tones. And I usually, I'm using it for molds a lot, but I, I do castings with it too. I make, make things. Yeah. And I don't know where I'm going. You know, I might end up doing Halloween masks or I don't know. I just, it kind of evolves. But back to what you were saying about, juggling things or putting different things together it's just it's really just uh you know my bread and butter is the window painting so yeah that's what i do but uh beyond that i get home and i you know i i make videos for the youtube channels both of them now and i sculpt i sculpt a lot i'm always making molds and uh and then i just balance it with family life you know and i have my chores i do a lot of the cooking which is ironic, you know, because I'm I'm vegan, but I cook meat and stuff, so it's kind of cool. Um, so your wife's not vegan? No, my no, oh, okay. no family is except me. I've been vegan for six years. Yeah, but, that's funny because I've known a lot of people like like that where their significant others are, you know, vegan. So that's kind of yeah, it's kind of interesting, kind of different. Yeah, but uh, but we manage, and it you know it all works out, and I'm not a I'm not a hardcore activist or yeah you know i just so how do you, how did you end up in this sculpture because like i mean we could we got we touched on a little bit like you, you had done illustration and like uh even like i think you were painting with like was it cell vinyl or something i mean um you were doing a lot of art and stuff like traditionally like for for flat images but when did when did you make that jump into like doing full out sculpture? Because it's like you're you're incredibly good at it. Um, but like, how did you develop that skill? Did you just play play around with it? Or? I started I started sculpting more seriously uh, around uh, probably around 1990 because I wanted to start gluing things to my car. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to I took a sculpting class and it was just it was really cool and and uh, and I was I was just really kind of fast at it and really comfortable with the clay and 
and uh, it was just it was exciting. But I started uh, making pieces, and I'd make simple uh, uh, plaster molds, and I'd cast in latex rubber, just the same way they make Halloween masks. And I uh, I would just glue them to my car, and I just that's how I started doing art cars and performing and. But not, but recently is when I've gotten more serious about sculpting. I've 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 bought all kinds of apps and things that will take the human body and turn them around, different poses and just incredible stuff like that. And I've also I purchased these guys. This is a I guess they call them e crochets. They're like when they're half, you can see the muscle and oh cool yeah. And then on the other half, it's you know the flesh. And it's like, you know, the whole body. I've got a male and female. I like to buy American, but these were so cheap compared. I mean, these are like three or $400 or something or more. Uh, you know, what, what, what are they made out of then? They're hard resin. Okay. And they actually come off the stand and you can, you know, like, you can see all the detail. And, yeah. And they're, they're a really great reference. And, uh, but like, I'm working on a piece, but, my goal now is to really learn and not just um you know i really want to learn how to draw i want to learn anatomy and i you know all my life i'm going to be 62 and i it's like i never really took the time to and like i've got sketches of just different uh let me see here different characters and i'm trying to like typically i do stuff more kind of like this it's kind of more uh just a lot of faces and torsos and you know partial partial things because i love faces and characters yeah. but, then, but then now i'm getting more into the i see if i can show that getting more into the bodies and you know the actual musculature and trying to trying to learn the the human form better and and that comes across in my sculpting too like this here's a piece here i don't know if you can see it but this one's kind of weird it's like a, a woman and her face is really young but her body is like all kind of rotted out mm -hmm. <laughs> like a zombie but i'll actually make a mold of this and uh I'll probably separate it. I'll make the torso and the head one mold and do the arms separately. And then this will end up on the van. All these pieces end up on the van. This is another guy I made. This is a resin casting from a sculpture I did. And then I, I do the hands separate like this and the arms. And then I cast these and then I'll put his arms on and but I have about 40 different pieces I'm working on simultaneously. Like this guy, he's pretty trippy. He's like, oh, shit. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> but uh, this is monster clay, which I just discovered. It's really great stuff. It seems like you use a, a few different kinds of media. Yeah, for... I do monster clay and, and uh, super sculpy and... Chavant clay and um, uh, <clears throat> this is another casting of a a skull I made. It's pretty kind of wicked. Yeah. But this is a resin, a resin casting. This is going on the car. So, so like the car, it, it's sort of. I mean, this is a project you eventually want to sell, but is it worth? Culture then is like a total passion project, then, right? Yeah, I still, I still love it, and I still, I still, I want to sell it, but it's not like okay, I'm gonna throw all this crap on here and sell it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's more like this is gonna be a masterpiece, and it's gonna be noteworthy. And when I drive around on Halloween, I'm gonna get looked at. You know, yeah. be like what in the hell is that? I mean, they do that anyway. If yeah. I if I drove it to the store right now in its condition, present condition, people would be like. Oh my God! What is this? You know, <laughs> so when it's done, it's going to be really noteworthy, and and I'll have tons of video of it. And part of the reason the channel, the Dark Ride channel, <clears throat> is uh, 
is to document the me building it. Yeah. So I have all this video footage of me working on it. I'll have the finished product. And when it's done, I'll shoot tons of video of me driving it around and interacting with people. And once I have it on video, I don't care if I don't actually have the piece anymore. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a piece of art that you would sell, like a piece yeah. of fine art. Yeah. So I don't really think about it. It's like I just because it was just sitting for two years. Yeah. You know, but it runs good. It's a good running van and I would drive it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of weird what I'm doing, I guess. I don't know. It's just it just really appeals to me and I want to I really want to become more of a sculptor. Yeah. I want to sculpt and and I I definitely know that when the van is sold I'm going to move on to sculpting different things. Huh. You know, and uh, I want to do just kind of not maybe still somewhat dark but kind of more uh you know, just, I don't know, mystic or, I don't know, esoteric or mystical type, I don't know, decorative, ornamental, but figurative, a lot of figurative stuff, really accurately done, you know, sculpture. Yeah. And so that's kind of my goal, that, and collect Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> so is there is there like a community of, I mean, of people that do art cars? Uh, yeah, there are. And uh, I'm going to go to, there's a show in Seattle called Seattle Art Car Blowout. And I'm going to take the car next year. Done or not, I'm going to go to it. I, I haven't gone to, I used, I used to go every single year, but I, you know, dropped out of the whole scene. So I haven't been there for three years. So I'm going to take it next year and we're going to drive it down the coast from Oregon to LA. And do you do like a, like, so, like, a can you do like a sort of a tour or? Yeah, well, just it, drive, just driving yeah. it. Yeah, or it's a circus. That's that's true. But yeah, like, I, mean, I could go into any town and go to the radio station or the TV station and say I'm here. Yeah, that's cool. Like, put me on TV. <laughs> but if you TV. if you're say if the if the channel if the if if the art I mean if the Nightmare on Wheels channel Dark Ride channel gets a big enough following, you might be able to see. Hey, check me out. I'll be driving through your town. You know. Oh, I probably will do that. Yeah. And I, because it's just, I like, you know, I like to make things that people haven't seen before. Yeah. And it's just so, it's just so weird, you know, and then you, but to have a central theme like that, you know, the other theme I thought too would have been cool with zombies because zombies are so popular. You know, I mean, like a Walking Dead van. But then yeah. I don't like to attach myself to um, name brands. I mean, doing zombies is fine, but Walking Dead, you know, because then you can't be as creative with what you're doing. You yeah. know, that's just how I feel. Like a lot yeah. of these sculptors, they sculpt, you know, uh, Batman and they collect stuff like that. And that's all cool. But for myself personally, I would rather create something that hasn't been seen yet or that's. Yeah. And it, and sometimes that's not as commercially viable viable as much as if you you know you know you start sculpting stuff that people are familiar with. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, but, we we definitely know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's the same thing with like comics and and doing like comic book conventions. And if you're if you're do, if you're kind of doing knockoff prints or fan art prints, I mean they get a lot of attention. But it's much yeah. harder to kind of do that and and be profitable selling your own stuff because people don't recognize it yet yeah and they don't you know there's like what is that that's just like dark right now it's like the whole idea of it it's nothing it doesn't exist i mean i have you know it's it has to be it has to be built but once i get on tv and i'm in the news and people see the damn thing they're going to be flipping out just like they did before with my other art cars my other art cars have been on so many national shows and yeah. and the news loves stuff like that. They love oh, yeah. they love crazy weird, you know, things. And uh, so I'm I'm pretty excited about the project, and it's it's gotten me to be more productive too. Yeah, like you know, you do the 
you do the hundred days of comics. To me, it's like the same thing, but it's not a hundred days. It's eighteen months. It's like yeah. it pushes me to like I start thinking. I want to go to Monster Palooza. I got to be ready. There's a there's a thing called the Dragon Parade in Florida or something with all these cosplay people and you know zombie people are into zombies and dragons and fairies and you know it's a huge parade. I imagine that in the parade with the dragon on the hood and a vampire with blood coming out of its mouth that's three feet tall. Yeah. Like, you know, hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, anytime, I mean, you go to conventions, it's kind of like we were talking about before, and they'll have like, they'll have like replicas of say, the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters, or like the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard. They'll have all these like famous cars, you know, out parked out. Right. And then, uh, but, uh, you know, it'd be cool to you know, see something like yours. I don't know. I, I'm curious what kind of reaction it would get because it's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. What, what movie is that from? Somebody would probably be asking, you know. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be – I mean, I've done it before. I've, yeah. done, I've done the formula for doing something like this. You have to – it's basically perseverance and also just, you know, you just – you get into it, you know, your passion. And, yeah. but at the same time, I have to balance it with the, the feeling of like, because before it went too far, I just like could never get enough attention. So, yeah. so now it's more of a balance. It's like, cause now if I was to drive my van, it just turns on the adrenaline, the dopamine, it just floods my brain. It's like, you know, playing Led Zeppelin four full blast and, it's just it's a mind-blowing experience people looking at you and i feel like some kind of god in the <laughs> crazy vehicle and it's feel it's it's really euphoric yeah but it's it's like you just can't get enough you know what i mean it's like a drug and so i'm doing that again but at the same time coming from a place of i basically want to you know, it's more about being creative and getting attention to yeah. so I can sell it. You know? So if, if you do your kind of, if you kind of take your trip down the coast, whether it's a tour or whatever, will it be just Scott Campbell driving the art car or, or are you going to bring yeah. Extremo yeah. or is it as you? No, I, I, Extremo's gone. Yeah. So, so the, the car is going to be the star in a sense. Yeah. I, well, I, it'll just be me. And, yeah. and like, if I go to a show, like if, if I end up going to some, cause a lot of these shows, like these big conventions, you know, the, you know, we've got Linda Blair and it's going to be there and, and uh, Robert Unglund or Freddy Krueger is going to be there. And, you know, we got so-and-so from this, the producer of this show and this person, was, in, you know, so that's kind of what I want to do is be like, you know, we got dark ride, nightmare on wheels, fan of a thousand faces. <laughs> That's like, because that's, that's really how everything comes to fruition. Fruition yeah. is I live it. I live it and I see it, and I don't think, oh, okay, I'm going to be at Monster Palooza. I am at Monster Palooza, and people are trying to talk to me and go, what the hell is this? And I see yeah. people coming up to me, and I feel it. And when you when you develop those emotions, you know, it's like getting your first comic book. You imagine it, you know, you imagine what it would be like to get your first comic book. And that's what drives you or to get the next one out. You, you imagine what it feels like. And that's what drives you and, and you know, makes you do things. And uh, so that's how I feel about the van. It's just like, I enjoy dr daydreaming about it yeah. and, and laughing because, because right now nobody knows me. And I think it's funny because nobody knows me yet. And, and and that sounds kind of egotistical, but it's just kind of funny because I have my little YouTube channel and I started a little Etsy channel and I put a couple sculptures on it and, you know, and it's just like, it's nothing really, but I am going to start a new, another Instagram account with dark ride. Nice. Yeah. And I think that's, if I post a lot of stuff there, then, uh, you know, that'll, uh, That'll draw attention to it too. Well, I think you're right about the fact that, like, you know, something like that, like, it, it's such a, it's such a kind of cool art form because it's very experiential, you know. So it's like, I think it, it's very much unlike 
a gallery where it's like you're kind of going to the people as opposed to the people going to the gallery. And I think that's awesome because like the, like just that, like you're right, like just driving a car like that down the street is an order on its own. And, 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 and I mean, these things are really incredible. Like if you guys are watching, I'm sure most people who are watching this are already subscribed, but if you haven't, you should subscribe to his channel, um, Dark Ride, because it, I mean, these are amazing, like amazing sculptures. They're very incredible. I'm still gonna mount this thing on on wood, but I mean, they're like that's a really rare one too. There's no mold for that. That's that thing's 20 years old. It's great. That um, piece is to, it's from my other art cars that got moved on. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, but like the the detail and the skill you put into these things, um, like it's definitely eye catching. It's definitely unique. Like I've never really seen a car quite like that. So I think that's very cool. I'm like fascinated by like so. For me, like personally, like um, I, I had like two years where I just did art direction. That was it. And I found myself like at my job getting really stale, like the day job, which is still creative. But I just found myself getting really dull, like in my output, and, like unaware of like trends and like uninspired and stuff. And so it, it, it's almost like I had to kind of start doing a creative project on my own to, to basically get the juice back, you know, to like to make yeah. art commercially. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it, is it kind of similar for you? Like where, like when, like you were saying, when you're, when you're working on this car, like does it kind of give you that extra fuel to kind of be a little more creative in your, in, in your day to day? Or oh, yeah. it's, I feel young and excited again. And, and I, I love painting windows, but you know, I, I painted Mike's drive-in today and I've been doing it for 30 years and and I've painted, you know, raspberry shakes for 30 years. It's like, yeah. I mean, I still enjoy it and I like teaching people, but I wanted to go to the feed, the Dream Syndicate here, Arts, Crafts and Ephemera Reddit. Go to the Halloween Reddit page and post about that car. That's great. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, I saw that too. I was going to mention that. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's really great to... Uh, stuff like that and that's that's kind of how i wanted to evolve into something and and uh but yeah that's true josh about getting having something besides your day job to spark your creativity and but but it, it, again though painting windows is freaking fun too i mean oh, yeah. there's sometimes when i'm painting windows and it's like like i'm doing pets on broadway now pet store on broadway and uh it's totally fun and they're letting me do whatever I want. So that's exciting, equally exciting too. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, as far as balancing everything, it's just like trying to enjoy all the parts of your life and, 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 and to realize like when I was younger, I, I thought, Oh, the, the good stuff is the art and getting attention. And you know, that, that's what I like to do. And, and I just became obsessed with it. But just doing laundry or washing dishes or cooking, you know, like those things help balance the the so-called exciting fun parts. You yeah. Know? Because I believe me, I had the exciting fun stuff a lot. I mean, for a lot of hours and a lot of days and a lot of time. And after a while, it loses its, uh, you know, it loses its brightness. It loses its appeal you know when you get too much of a good thing it's really it really is true that's like these people that are famous you know these people like michael jackson or robin williams or anybody the kardashians these people have everything mon monetarily and they have the perfect relationships supposedly and they have the perfect house and the perfect car and, and you know we never arrive nobody ever really arrives you know outside world you're never going to arrive if you derive your balance and pleasure and everything external to you like you know the way you feel internally if it's based on the outside world you'll never get it yeah like oh god if i could just do dark ride boy i'd be happy then i'm not going to be happier when i sell the car than i am now yeah i'm going to be the same <laughs> and so yeah. it's like 
that's just something I've learned with age. You know, I'm going into my 60s. It's like because I've done a lot of things and. You know, I mean, I haven't done stuff like Robin Williams. I mean, I haven't reached that pin. Well, he's dead now, but I mean, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm not a famous movie star or anything, but I've gotten a fair amount of everything I wanted, you know, as far as creativity and attention and, and, uh, and it's just getting to the point where it's that stuff's really important, but it's not that important, really. It's, yeah. like, it's not as important as like just, relaxing for a moment sitting in the backyard in the sun and having a beer or just you know talking to my grandson or something and, and so it's like it's that's to me part of the balance you know that you were talking how to you know how to balance things out and how to fit things in it's just it's accepting all the parts of, yeah. li of living and even the stuff that is usually not the fun stuff, you know, it's just a lot of that comes from, I, I meditated for, I think I talked about in the last episode I, I that I was on, I talked about that. I did it for nine months and that, that helped me also. But, but then I forget and I get kind of caught up in the world again and, but nothing like before. If I get to a point where I'm like anxious about the future or anxious about something, or if I, if I could, if I could get this, I'd, I'd be, I'd feel better. Yeah. Then I, then I remember really quick, and I kind of laugh inside, and, and I think it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, I mean, it's funny because like a little bit of what we do professionally is like very similar. Because I work in, in souvenirs, and you're doing window paintings, and half of what you're painting is trying to convince people like, hey, get this, and it'll make you. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so we're part of like we're kind of illusion makers. We're we're, we're know, that to people. <laughs> and yet, like you know, I catch myself falling for that as well. Where I'm like, oh, if I could just get this, then then contentment. But I think you're right. But, but it's also I think important. Like, and once again, like you have way more experience than I do with with the art and, and, and doing it professionally. But for me, what I've been finding especially lately is that um, uh, like, so I, I'm aware of, like I think being aware of yourself is really important, you know, cause it's like, like basically like I'm aware of the fact that I have to be making stuff. Like it's just part of my personality. I have to be making stuff. Um, and it's not necessarily like the result of it being made. It's just the act of making it. I have to do. Well, that's the thing, you know, the making of it, when you get to a point where you're, you realize like, like when I sculpt, that is just like meditation because I'm yeah. not thinking about the past or the future or anything. Yeah. I might, right. I'm just sitting there and I'm sculpting and I'm in the moment and, and, you know, and that's, that's kind of the secret is, <clears throat> is realizing that. <clears throat> but again, it's fun to have goals and little things going on and, oh, for sure. You know, plans and, but to, to think that you're going to be happier when you get those things. I mean, you might be happier for a few months. Yeah. Like if you got the, the most bitchin' car in the world that you always wanted, <laughs> you'd be happy for maybe six weeks. Yeah. But not every moment. You're going <clears> to, <throat> but after six weeks or a couple months, you're going to be like, it's like you never even got the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And it's just, that, but that comes with doing it over and over and going, oh shit, I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like doing it again. Like, God, if I could get on TV. Well, I got on TV 18 times or 20 times. I've been on national TV eight times. I've been on Juxtapose magazine. I ran for mayor of Portland. Everybody knows me. Well, they used to know me, not anymore. But every seven out of ten people knew me in Portland. They knew who I was. I mean. I, People call me a local icon, you know. I mean, people even like today, they come up and like, oh, yeah, when I was in grade school, I used to, you know, your comic strip, Portlandosaurus Rex, you know, I, I remember reading that when I was a little kid. And it's like, God, if I just had my own comic strip in a newspaper, I'd be so happy. that I'd be happy then. Or if I would be in an art gallery, you know, if I, if I could be in an art gallery, oh. <laughs> it's like, 
but you never arrive and that's that's the thing yeah say but but again at the same time I should I should see if I I got some old this is a comic strip that I did from in the 80s Let's see if I can is that the Portland source Rex or yeah see if I can I don't know if you can see it in the camera but but let me see but yeah this is the this is the character does it show backwards or it's just backwards when I'm looking at it uh, I think that, it. Hey. You, have to, you have to talk Scott or else you will it'll, it'll talk, anyway, talk while you're showing it oh anyway uh, this uh, yeah this is 1988 and uh, it was all about Portlandosaurus Rex and you know I don't know I, I can't read it because I can't see it but you can kind of see the character and he, he this one's about where he he sees these guys going into a, a local a local convenience market and uh, and then he you know like yeah let's get out of here anyway he bites the van and it, you know it's really corny this like Garfield you know he bites the van and the cops come and they take him away and he's like yeah he took a bite out of crime so yeah it was just corny you know just fun stuff but this would take me all day to do I'd, I'd write oh, yeah. it and then I'd ink it and then I'd have to make stats we didn't have computers then where you could you know go into Photoshop it was it was just there were computers but they weren't that readily available but uh, I'd have to have a you know a, a photo stat made and then reduced because the original was a lot bigger and then they give me like 15 bucks a week for this but that was my way of trying to get known too then you know? yeah it was just another another form you know but it's it's been great to not to not desire that anymore you know yeah. and i i want it now only for the reason that i am selling the van and i want to get the van known and i want to do that but it's just different it's not this you know sickening you know gotta do it and yeah boy i'm gonna blow everybody away when they see me you know kind of thing or they're gonna see what i do and <clears throat> i'm gonna be famous and you know yeah it becomes yeah. obsessive and that's how i was up until just recently like maybe two and a half three years ago oh wow yeah i think it's but in a way it's sort of <sighs> I guess it depends how you look at it, but if you if you say you know I want to I want to do this like like you were saying oh if I only get on national TV or whatever, but if you do that then you've kind of met a goal and as long as you know as long as you make another goal after that and you keep reaching different goals I don't yeah that's whatever. great like if you approach it like okay you know just realizing that <clears throat> because when you say once I get this I'll be happy yeah you know, that's, that's the you're not happy now. Yeah. yeah. And when you get there, you're going to have to do another thing to be happier. Yeah. But, but it's okay to have goals and to want to be to do stuff. But really, if I if I lost my YouTube channel tomorrow and I lost the van and it was gone and disappeared and nobody ever knew who I was, it it would be kind of a relief in a way. I could just yeah. sculpt or start over or do something different. But before that idea would be frightening. Yeah. But now it's like, I like it and I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm playing. It's fun. I'm playing yeah. a game, you know, and, and it's okay to work on stuff and make things and have things and make money. And, but to just not desire it, you know, like, when, yeah. like, yeah. I think, um, so like there's a I think there's a saying like nature hates a vacuum kind of thing and it's like it's it's based on the idea of that like where where people are always chasing something to fill that vacuum and yet like it's just not going to be filled <laughs> like no um, because well we're perfect yeah you're perfect you're a you're a some type of conscious entity that has no position in space or wavelength or anything and you just are and yeah. and you. You know, you're not male or female or old or young or anything. You're just, you know, and when you drop your body, you, <clears throat> you're no longer Josh. You don't have Josh's memories or his mind, but you're the essence of what you are. That's just what I believe through what I've done that you, 
you know, when you're, when you quiet your mind for 30 seconds or so, then you really see what you are. And, and then again, I can't prove that, you know, but it makes me feel good to think like that. And, but, uh, yeah, it's, to me, it's just, I just feel so much better in my life than I did, you know, three, four years ago. Yeah, and I, I actually, like, I find that really important to touch on it because, like, I, I, I was really, like, about, like, probably before having my son, basically, I was very, like, self-driven to the extent where I had, like, this checklist of, like, everything I'd achieve in comics and cartooning, and I, like, I viewed it as, like, this stepladder to whatever contentment I'd get, you know? Yeah. But, but since then, I've found it really fascinating because, like, I like one of my favorite people to watch, even though I didn't even like his comedy that much. But it's like, like Jerry Seinfeld, I think it's fascinating on his own, just as a person when he's when he's doing his own stuff, like comedians and cards with coffee. Not not a stand up. I'm not a big fan of his stand up. But what what's fascinating is like when he's talking to younger comedians, he's like really fascinated in asking them about like what they want in comedy. And then he'll kind of ask them all those questions and then he, he sincerely will just kind of ask them, well, what do you do when you can ha when you've had all, when you have all of that? He's like, I, I, he's like, if I want to go to Spain, I can go to Spain. It's like, if I want to, whatever I want, I can just do. And he's like, I hate it. <laughs> like he misses, <laughs> he talks about like missing the hunt for the thing. Yeah. You know? As like he's got the thing, and and like yeah, you know, to me that's really fascinating because it's like there's somebody who's like super successful, like they can go to the White House and visit the president. Although today I don't think they want to do that, but, but <laughs> you know, but um, but they can go anywhere they want on the planet and be recognized, you know, and and they've achieved that goal, and yet like they haven't hit content, you know. I, to me, that's always really. Um, that's something I try to remind myself of when when I do catch myself doing that, like, oh, if I could just get this interview with this magazine or whatever it is, you know. Um, I mean, it's it, like you were saying, it's good to have as like a a fun kind of game, but it's not it's not good if you're taking the game too seriously because you're forgetting, like, hey, we're we're just throwing ink on paper here, you know, <laughs> like, or we're throwing together some you know, some stuff and making cool stuff and it's fun. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it is, it is really, I, I don't know, to me that, that's really fascinating and I think it's really hard uh, because I think when you're an artist, like inevitably this is our sport, you know? Right. Like, um, I, like, you know, I was never good at sports. This was the thing I'd do in school that like people would go, oh wow, cool, let me see, you know? Yeah. So, that kind of thing. So it's like the one way I get attention. And so you get kind of this reinforced idea of like having to build this attention getter. And um, I don't think it's bad to be aware of the fact that maybe you do need some acknowledgement and attention. And maybe that is, maybe that's a little piece of that. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, on the human yeah. side of things, we are human and we're playing that game. So yeah. it's fine. It's just when you become obsessed with it, like I was. and. Oh yeah, but yeah, it's really. I think it's like oh, it's like you think to yourself, "Wow, what would it feel like in this brand new car?" And God, if I had that, if you know, I imagine having that car with my hands on the wheel and driving down the road would be so incredible. But there's something more incredible than that, and that's to not want a car in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> to not have any desire. Like once I realized that, you know, what I what I am, because I'm really not a thing or a what, but what I, you know, self realization. Then it's kind of like, it's just really relaxing. It's really comfortable to not have to be famous anymore, or to, to yeah, you know, try to be better and improve myself. Like I'm learning sculpting, and I really want to learn anatomy, but because I enjoy it and it's a game, but. It's not going to make me any better. I can't improve the essence of what I am. Huh. I can't. I feel like I can't. And I. And at the same time, I can't make myself worse either. No matter what I do, I can't degrade the essence of what I am. 
huh. it's kind of a it's kind of a funny thought but but at the same time it's like living in both worlds you know it's like a balance you know yeah because i went all the way the other way the other direction you know where it was just totally materialistic and have to all in my head and then i went the other direction too where i just let go of all that i stopped singing dancing listening to music for a year you know i just painted windows and started making videos and my first videos are kind of more subdued and but then now i'm kind of you know getting more interactive with people and you know being kind of like what i was but not really not to the extent where it's like mentally you know deranged yeah <laughs> I think this does have to do with the, the idea of balance too, because like it, 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 that in itself is a balance, right? Like where it's like you can't kind of go to the point where you're not having fun with life, you know? Like that's that's one end of the spectrum where it's just like you know, like not enjoying things. Like for instance, if you if you went and you did, if you were fortunate enough to get a new car or something like enjoying that purchase or whatever there's nothing wrong with that yeah it's okay to enjoy pleasure exactly Seek it because exactly. i don't feel good right now i yeah. i need pleasure i need food i need sex i need alcohol i need attention yeah because <laughs> i don't feel good right now yeah that's like um, that's that's the problem is when you're like not in the moment and you're like it's like and then when you're drawing and stuff you know and it's late at night and you're in that timeless zone that's that's you that's the closest you get to the true essence of your beingness i think you know you're surfing or playing a guitar or you know whatever you're doing or working in your garden and you're not thinking about the past or the future you're in that moment that's that's it you know that's i think that's the you know the closest you get to it so what is Scott up to? We kind of kicked him. Out. <laughs> <laughs> or he's just oh, I, uh, yeah, I'm just just doodling here, making some avatars. But um, yeah, I was kind of I was gonna kind of go back to something Josh said, and then uh, we kind of veered off. But you had mentioned something about uh, oh geez, now what now what was it? Um, uh, kind of the I forgot which how you phrased it, but you were talking about Seinfeld and how that that. I guess it was like the thrill of the hunt or something like that. Or what was the phrase that you used, Josh? Do you remember? I, I, I think it was just, um, let me see. The gist was just that he asked young comedians like what they were, what their goals were or whatever, but it was more in like a, like wanting to kind of like vicariously experience what it was like to not have fulfilled goals. <laughs> right. Well, because that, that came, because I started thinking about, collectors and like if, if you're old enough to to know what life was like before the internet um seeking things out and kind of like oh I, I want that but how do i find that this this item that's so elusive but now with the internet all you have to do is to do a search and if you got enough money there's bound to be somebody selling it and you, and you you buy it but before like for collectors you're like oh i need this certain part to this uh you know this say whatever a toy collection or something like that or a comic book or something and it was it was so difficult to do that but now with the internet it's that's all at your fingertips so it's almost like that's how i can kind of relate to that you know well it's like if there's no chance that you can lose there's no excitement in the game but right you can always right. get what you want and you're always going to win how fun is that yeah <laughs> and that's how life is too I think it drives some people mad, like some of these people. I mean, look at Robin Williams. It drove him mad. Yeah. You know, he went insane. And that's, you know, that's just how it goes, you know, when you become, I mean, if, if it's like if he didn't, if he had realized what I'm talking about, he never would have killed himself because he would have realized that it doesn't matter that any of it, you know what I mean? It, that it doesn't make any difference that he can't make himself worse or better, or he's just perfect. And, you know, to realize that it's it just, it's really comfortable. 
and I don't always feel like that. Like just be, because I'm talking about it, I'm starting to feel really good. But yeah. I don't always feel this good. I, you know, I forget and I go about my day, and then I get anxious because I got 17 Kentucky Fried Chickens to paint, and you know, I'm still working on this other job. And but then I kind of back off from that, and I just, you know, I don't get really upset about it. But you know, it's like when I talk about stuff that's, you know, along this vein, I do get more, it reminds me of experiences and over the past couple of years that I've had. And I start, I start feeling more comfortable and, you know, or if I get in conversations with people during the day about stuff like that. Yeah. I think I like, for me, I mean, it's, it's a little different, I think philosophically, but I think it, it comes down to the same, Thing, which is like I think you need a philosophy of some sort that's outside of like a material philosophy to kind of be content because I think like material philosophy it's just not really fulfillable like, there's no there's no end to that chase and then like like you were saying if you look at the people who've kind of made it to the end of that chase like you know a lot of them are like really miserable <laughs> I mean so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. I don't know. Scott, what do you do to kind of like center yourself? The other Scott, not, not Scott C. <laughs> but uh, what do you do to center yourself like when you're like, because I mean, we're kind of in this field where you, you, you have to kind of chase attention and and chase like kind of like people looking at your work and, and like, you in a weird way, we're kind of forced to like stand in a room and go, hey, look at me, look at my art, look at me. Um, what do you do to kind of center yourself with like that kind of thing so you don't get too lost in that like desire to be seen or desire to get that next thing? For me, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just, uh, maybe I'm not really wired like that or like it, to me, my, my biggest passion, and I'm sure it's the same with you guys, is just, it's just the artwork and creating things and, and coming up with ideas and all that stuff. So I yeah. never really had much of a desire for like a, like a fancy sports car or anything like that. To me, that's just, to me, a car is just kind of a way to get you from point A to point B. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. If you like, you know, if you like that stuff, I mean, you know, I, and I, I just, I went and saw that movie Baby Driver, which was awesome yesterday. Um, and it's cool seeing these, these cars and stuff like that. And all, you know, these fancy cars and stuff, but I just, you know, other than, you know, from aesthetic, like, oh, that, that's kind of cool to look at. It's just, that that's not something that appeals to me. And everyone's got their own thing that they kind of aspire to have or want or whatever. For yeah. me, for me, it's just, you know, if, I mean, and if I, if I had so much money that, that had, you know, dispensable income, you know, I, I, I mean, I guess, you know, if I had to do with it, I'd probably, I'd probably like find a Batmobile and buy it or something like that. I mean, or like <laughs> one or something or you like buy that. Dark Ride. You buy yeah. Dark Ride, Nightmare and Will's fan of a thousand but, faces or no skulls. But, <laughs> but that's just cause you know, I, you know, if I'm, if I'm any kind of a car guy, it's it's stuff from movies and stuff that I like. But right, that's right. more just you know, it's 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 like oh sure that would be cool, but it's nothing I really aspire to. You know, I guess you know I just somewhere along the line I just I kind of said you know I'm just in order to pursue, pursue the lifestyle that I like, uh, you know I'm going to have to make some sacrifices. And then I came to find out that a lot of the, those things that a lot of people want, yeah weren't really that important to me. The more important thing was just to be able to create and be able to, you know, my biggest thing and the thing that, you know, I would like to get to a point where I can leave some kind of legacy where after I'm gone, people will remember and say, oh yeah, he's that guy that did this. or there's something out in the world that I created. Even if they, even if they don't attribute it back to me, if it's something that's out there and it's, you know, people are still getting, getting joy from it. Um, that's kind of what, in the end, what I would like to kind of, you know, that's kind of my goal, I guess, or what I'd like, you know. So I don't know. Yeah. So like, do you get, like, with that goal, though, does it, was there a point where that used to, like, frustrate you or anything like that? Like, for me, like, like I had 
and I still do. I mean, I still would love to like, like for my graphic novel or whatever, I'd love for it to be like an Eisner winner and explode and everybody loves it and that kind of thing. But that used to be like a serious desire, like beyond just like healthy, I think, for me. And I was just kind of curious if you had something like that where it's like, you know, kind of like the, the legacy thing almost becomes, <laughs> I don't know. It's just a thought, but it's just like, at least for me, maybe it's because I, I'm, you know, I don't know, but like for me, I used to, I used to have that to an extent where it was, it was sometimes crippling, because then when I finished something and it didn't hit that mark, or even yeah. if it did, I would like, you know, get the satisfaction that I was hoping for. You know? Yeah, it's kind of weird because like, like I mentioned this before, but like one of the, you know, one of the first like projects when I was younger that I worked on was this kid show and we got pretty far with it. I mean, we had, a, it was optioned by a Hollywood studio and we had a pilot shot and everything. And we had like, you know, we were, we were going somewhere with it. And then it, you know, like a lot of projects in Hollywood, they just kind of fall apart. So, you know, and for a while after that, I was kind of like, well, that didn't work out. I wonder, you know, that was kind of, I was like, that was kind of my big, that could have been my big break or my big thing. And then, you know, and I, since then I've never had, I've never gotten that close to having something, you know, on either on television or as a, you know, kind of a, like an entertainment type property, but it's, it, I got kind of past that point and it's just like, now I just kind of want to do kind of what I'm doing. Now, if, if something happens where somebody sees something they like, say if, a, you know, somebody likes this whole mad scientist thing and say they want to make a show out of it or whatever, I mean, that would be super cool, but I, I guess if, if that doesn't happen, it's not, it's not something I really strive for. I know, I just know a lot of people that they, they create comics because it's a means, a means to an end of maybe getting this TV show made or something. That's yeah. not my goal with like Young and the Dead or any of the other things I work on. It's not, it's, it could be a, it would be an awesome byproduct if it happens. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, if some kind of cool deal comes by and somebody wants to turn it into a movie or something or whatever, sure, that'd be awesome. But I, I don't, I don't really pursue that. And maybe that's sort of, that's good and bad. It's, it's good because you, you're, you're not trying to, I guess you're, you're kind of happy with just the, the idea behind it and creating, creating something you're enjoying and you're not, you're not just doing it just to, to do something else to bring in money or whatever. Yeah. But then again, it's, and the, the other way it's, it's kind of like, well, maybe if I was a little more, if I pursued it a little more, you know, try to make that happen, like went out there and, oh, you know, this is cool, you know, this would make a great property. I mean, people that could do that, that's pretty impressive that I, I always hear the stories of like, somebody who had this cool idea and they shopped it around and they put it in front of people and stuff and then people took notice. So that's cool too. So I don't know, just at my point right now, I'm just, I'm just kind of liking the process of creating it and coming up with the ideas and stuff. So what helped you get there? Like, it, you know, cause it sounds like there was a point where you were kind of like, like almost about to break or whatever with it. And like, what, what, what helped you kind of transition? from that to just making stuff just to make it, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but... Um, yeah, I don't know, because a, a lot of, some of it had to do with with uh, just like that option kind of running out and different... The thing is, you get people that are excited about something, but they're not the only people to answer to. And then it, it only takes, it takes so many people to make something happen, but it only takes one person to shut it down. Exactly. You know? So, so like, somebody at the company that optioned it, you know, decided that they didn't want to pursue it any longer. So then it was dead, even though we had a lot of, a lot of like the creative people and other, other people there that they were into it. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's part of it, you know, and then the, the other part was my partner in that endeavor. He was quite a bit older than me. He was kind of the, the finance financial guy behind it. And he was, it was all, so it was all based on this little, uh, gibbon ape, and I don't know if you ever seen what a gibbon looks like, but they're they're apes, but they're about the size of a monkey. But this was this was my partner, you know, that was his that was his pet, you know, and he you know he took him around. He was kind of like a local celebrity, kind of like Scott is with with Extremo or whatever. But everywhere he'd go, you know, people wanted to see his the the, the gibbon's name was Alex. Everyone wanted to see Alex, so um, so he kind of became this local celebrity, and he's got pictures with him with all you know different you know, 
celebrities and stuff with the ape and stuff, and he even snuck him on a plane once and made you know national news with that. So all that kind of stuff. But it, 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 so he wanted to he wanted to do something with that kind of fame and kind of make make him a role model for kids. So it kind of went from there and everything, but that's how it, that's how it all ha happened. And then, you know, he ended up getting cancer and he passed away. And so, you know, that was, that was kind of the, you know, <laughs> no pun intended, kind of morbid, but that was kind of the nail in the coffin for it. You know, yeah. you know, for a while after that, we had other, other people that were kind of invested in the project that we tried to see what we could do with it. But, you know, it just kind of faded away from, from after that, you know, because we could have, you know, and we have we had done so much stuff, and he was he was kind of at the point where, well, I don't know, you know, how much we've kind of tried this, and we got pretty far, but do I want to keep sinking any more money into it, type of thing like that? So I don't know, but like you know, so after that, I, you know, I had contacts because we did, had been doing, you know, we did all the filming, and this was a like a live action property with like puppet characters and things like that, and I got into you know. I knew a lot of people in the, you know, film and, you know, video industry just based on doing all this stuff. So I started getting into that and then, you know, I never really, for a while, I don't think it really developed any other properties, you know, after that. Yeah. Um, but then, but now, you know, I'm doing like, you know, now I'm doing kind of Young and the Dead. So, and who knows? I mean, it could, you know, there could be something there, but that's, you know, like I said before, it's, I don't know if I answered your question or if I just kind of ran, or ran around it for a while. <laughs> you, got, you got close. So, like, the thing you know, I'm just trying to get at is, like, it, like, it, it feels like um, in order to kind of be able to be creative sustainably, uh -huh. like, you know, we all need, like, something that drives us outside of just, like, that property getting getting sold yeah. to HBO or whatever, you know? Like, well, it, um, like so, with with like CircleWorks Art Labs, my ultimate goal is to build a property that that will hopefully like you know be able to kind of support me and that people like and everything. And I'm a long way from there, but I'm you know I'm trying to build an audience and 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 you know sort of a a need for that or people that want this want that kind of stuff. You know, what what I'm doing, and it's I'm a long way from that. But but every little you know. Every little person that kind of gets it, or every you know, people that comment on YouTube, and I've got people that you know, kind of say, "Oh, that's awesome" and stuff. That helps you. You don't have to. To me, you don't actually have to be at that end goal yet. But it, as long as there are little benchmarks along the way, and and you see that people, some people are getting it, and you know, and a lot of it's just a lot of it is just the amount of time that I have because I spend a lot of time creating this stuff. I know that if I actually if I if I had the time, and eventually I'll get to this point, but where I could actually go out and contact like science blogs and people people that because right now most of the most of the people that like this are kind of fans of just the artwork, but I think I need to kind of get beyond that and and get into people that are into science and stuff like that who who maybe don't really know how or haven't really seen how science and art combined can be kind of fun, and then. And then that's probably where I think the fan base can kind of grow outside of just, you know, the art community. But so, I mean, eventually I'll get to that point where I, because I, I, I know it's, it's right. It seems like right now it's just not in front of enough people or, or kind of the right people that really like that. But I know those people exist. It's just a matter of getting it out there. And that's more of a marketing thing. But right now I'm kind of focusing on the creative thing. Like, and if I had, you know, if I had some, you know, if I had money to hire somebody to help me market it, then that's definitely something that I would do. So, you know, and it, it, again, that's like if I can get for far enough where it's starting to bring in some money, I can put some of that money aside, and then I can I can say, you know, I need somebody to help me kind of market this or whatever, or I can just kind of wait till and just gradually chip away at the marketing little by little while I'm trying to create all this stuff. Yeah. But you know, ultimately, I would like to get to the point where this is this is like it's a brand that people know. You know, if it was like a, if it was something even like you know a quarter of what like Johnny Cupcakes is or something like that, something yeah. like that, somebody that that comes up with a, an idea and a brand, and people for whatever reason they gravitate to it and they find something in it that they like, and and they're loyal to it. You know. Yeah. 
I, I, I feel like, I, like for me, I'm mystified by it myself because, like, I, I would like, you know, very similar to what you were saying. I'd like to get to the point where, you know, when I put out this comic, like, there's a lot of readers and stuff like that. But like once again, it's like any time I've had any successes in illustration, like or in art, where I'm like, oh, you know, like I remember as an illustrator, it was Scholastic was the big one, one of the big clients, where I was like, if I can just get a gig with Scholastic, I'll be happy. And then I got a gig with Scholastic, and I wasn't happy. <laughs> like, yeah. They were a client, you know, and they were just like every other client. Except, I mean, they're a good client, excellent art directors, but I mean, it's not. You know, it wasn't like I got to just hang up my, you know, throw the towel in or whatever and call it a day and yay, success in illustration, you know. And I, and I, and so, like, I think it is kind of like, it's good to have goals as long as you understand they'll, they'll always be goals. Like, for instance, with the YouTube channel, right, like, how many subscribers do you need for it to be a success, you know? Yeah. It's a good question to think about because it's like there's really I don't think there's a cap to that. I think if you get a hundred thousand subscribers, you're gonna want a two hundred thousand. If you want two hundred thousand, you're gonna want five hundred thousand. You know, if if you have a million, you want to be a billion. You know, like it's just I don't know if there's a a point where you can just cash in and go, okay, I'm I'm good. You know, but I think it is good. Like I you know. But I also think like it would be silly to be doing this stuff and not trying to put it out there, you know. Yeah. So it's it's this weird balance. I, I haven't really found it personally. But. That is really true though about YouTube. You know, it's like when I first started with my window painting channel, it's like just to get a hundred subscribers. <clears throat> you know, it's exciting. And then the big goal was, you know, a thousand. <clears throat> and then now I have almost three thousand. But I'm not that interested because I'm trying to build my other channel, which only has 160 subscribers. Yeah, it's like just starting a new game, you know. And yeah. I mean, I'm I I like that I have 3,000, you know. But I'm not counting down the clock to 3,000, you know. Yeah, that I almost have 3,000. So it's like, you know, it's it's just funny. It's all just perception of. You know, like if I if I could have saw what I have now at the age of uh, 61, yeah, you know that what I have achieved. I mean, maybe not financial freedom, but I mean, just achieved as far as getting to do what I do. I would be like, wow, you know, if I could have looked into the future and as a kid and thought. Dude, an awesome van. <laughs> you know, or or just, you know, my sculpting abilities and even though I'm not, you know, the greatest at it, drawing and sculpting compared to what I had then, you know. I mean, I started out making dollar sixty five an hour working at McDonald's, you know, in nineteen seventy. And uh just I never would have dreamed I could make you know as much money that I make in a day sometimes yeah and, and doing art and like with your own business you know I mean that's yeah you know I, I do feel lucky though I still I do now but a few years ago I was just like you know gotta have more yeah for, for me it was kind of different because when I was younger it was and I, I talked to a lot of other people that kind of had that same you know, feeling, but like when you're into comics and you see, you know, your favorite comic book mm -hmm. artists, especially, especially if you're trying to break in around in the '90s where comics were just huge and people were becoming yeah. millionaire creators, and you think, commercials. <laughs> yeah, and you think, you think, well, you know, I can draw, you know, I'm decent, you know, I can, you know, I just put my stuff out there, and and Stanley's going to come by and knock on my door, and you know, and be like, Excelsior. You're great, kid. Come and draw Spider Man. There would have been like you know but great, great impression. <laughs> but that but that, you know, never you know that doesn't happen and you, you realize most of these people that, that got there, it wasn't really because you look at any of the image founders and you know, say whatever you want about their art, whether you really like it, whether you think they're great artists or whatever, those guys those guys were all great businessmen and that had more to do with any of that image success than it did 
their artwork, you know, and, and, and hustle, and these guys are hustlers, and that's, that's, that's kind of what it takes, and I never, you know, I'm trying to get better at that, but I, that was, that's not like a part of my personality that, that, you know, it's just there. I don't have that A-type personality, and, you know, I, you know, a lot of that, that's basically, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, you've got to, stuff's not going to come to you. Stanley's not going to come knocking to your door. You have to kind of make it happen. And yeah. you can do certain things taken nowadays, take advantage of the internet and use that to kind of get your name out there and everything. But that's a big part of it, you know, and it's, you know, so I kind of, but, but what I, what I was saying was, you know, I kind of thought, oh, I'm going to be fame. I'm going to be a famous artist. And then after a while, you're like, well, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so at, at that age, I thought I probably was going to be a little more successful than I am. But then you realize you're kind of a stupid kid at that point, and that's not the way the world works. You know? Yeah, it's so weird, though, because I remember one of my fantasies when I was younger was, like, um, I wanted to have an apartment in New York with a fire stick by the window. And I... <laughs> Like Peter Parker's apartment, you know, like yeah. I, I didn't really. I, I, I think I had read enough about cartoonists and stuff, like um, where I had no illusions that I would be making massive amounts of money. But I did think I'd be known, you know, and and I think that's kind of what I was getting at. Is like I used to have kind of that unhealthy drive where it was like, um, you know, like I got to get Eisner's and Harvey's and. Ignatz award and I gotta rack up all the awards and then and then I'll be content, you know. And I I think that used to be my thing with, with cartooning was like I didn't really care how I was financially at the time. I was just like it was all about the recognition and the fact that I would do this great work. And now it's like it, it's kind of weird because I'm still aiming to do great work, but um, it might be that I know more about the industry than I used to, like in the sense of like the realities of like what book sales look like, and even being a famous cartoonist, like how, unless you're doing, like unless you're Jim Lee or you're you're somebody doing like a big property that's already established, like you know most people on the street aren't going to know who you are, even if you're the biggest thing in cartooning, you know. Um, and so like it, I don't know, like to me now it's just more of like I really want to make a really good book. And that's my goal. You know, it's just to make a good book that I'm happy with. But it, but it took a while for me to get there because it used to be based on, you know, a lot more than that. Like there was a lot more kind of nefarious goals that were more like kind of like about recognition and like all the people in the world are going to look at my stuff. You know, um, so it's I kind of relate to what you're saying, Scott. Because and I do think some of it's a byproduct of the '90s because you had. You know, I mean, you had comics selling millions of copies a month, you know, which is insane. I mean, if you had a comic that sold that much in a year now, people would be like, this is the best seller, you know? Um, so, it, it, I don't know, it's, inter it, it's interesting that difference, you know? Um, but at the same time, I don't think it takes away the love for the, the thing, you know? Um, and, and also, just being able to make a living doing art is such a hard thing, because I know a lot of, I'm, I'm sure both of you, Scots, know a lot of artists that are incredibly talented who just couldn't do it for a living, and they yeah. tried every avenue, you know? So I think we're all pretty fortunate to like be making a living doing art, you know? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. But we get used to it. Yeah. Like everybody else and everything else. we. You get used to it, and that's the thing. Oh, for sure. You know, and you you can either remind yourself, or you can just you can just think, hey, I, you know, it, the, none of it matters anyway. <laughs> but I mean, it does. It's a two sided coin. It does, but it doesn't. Yeah. Because when you when you realize again, it just comes back to like. I mean, I just. Come, comes back to the idea of like it's like silence it's like silencing your mind because your mind's always going like you know going 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 yeah and it's such a great place when you're you just don't have any words or thoughts I don't know if you watch Eckhart Tolle a lot of people think he's hokey and stuff but he 
you know, he, he's kind of like, I'm kind of into him too, Eckhart Tolle. And he's a, he's a pretty, he's a great philosopher and spiritual teacher or whatever. But, but a lot, a lot of years I didn't understand his books or didn't get what he was talking about. And, but, uh, and, and like even the stuff that I talk about or, or he talks about or the stuff that anybody talks about, to me, it's, it's not really the truth. Words aren't the truth. You know, it's kind of, it sounds weird, but it's like when you're just quiet, when you're in that quiet place, just working on your art, that's, to me, that's the truth. You know, the, the moment, the present, the present moment, that's the truth of, of things. And, yeah, I think, you, I think you're hitting on something good, which is the fact that, like, if you're not present when you're making your art, then you're going to miss the whole process. And then, like, even if you got every award in the world, you're going to be like, well, that sucked making, you know, as opposed to, like, if it does succeed or do well, like, you can think back and go, like, that, that whole process was beautiful, you know? And if it doesn't succeed, you can be like, ah, but, like, I, I'm much more kind of, in that zone of like of making stuff now where it's like to me like my goal is just to make the best page i can make and just that goal in itself is fun you know yeah. um and then i move on to the next one and it's like i actually end up a lot more content with the work in general because i'm not looking back at stuff i phoned in because i was aiming to get it out in a certain time so i can pick up an iceberg <laughs> you know like <laughs> Which was old me. I mean, that's that's kind of the way I used to look at things. Now I might have been like way too, um, you know. I, I I do think I was unusually focused on that kind of thing. So I think I relate to to what you were talking about, kind of driving you before too. I, I relate to that a lot because it's like that that was my drive for a very long time. So I think like being in the moment of making the art and just enjoying that experience. <laughs> yeah. I like I like learning a lot. I mean, it's another one of my needs is to to learn and to improve. And like right now, I'm really getting into <clears throat> mold making, and that stuff is you know it's interesting. At the same time, it's so frustrating. Yeah. And you know, it's it's really frustrating when you spend 150 dollars on silicone rubber to make some molds and you screw it up. Oh, like 150 dollars, you know, worth of stuff and you know or you know you 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 i get anxious and then i buy the wrong material and you know and don't realize that you can't use this particular clay with this particular mold making material and yeah i'm doing the same thing i've been i've been working on making stickers and i bought some of these chemical labels because they're they're like waterproof and everything uh -huh. and uh you know I wasn't paying attention to the fact that there's two different kinds. There's the one for laser printers and inkjets, and I got the wrong kind. Oh. I tried to print it, and it's just like, oh man, no, no. And they weren't cheap, you know. They're about, you know, a pack of fifty. It's like fifty bucks for a pack of fifty, so a buck a sheet. And then, so finally, I got them to work. You know, I I used a, a laser printer to get it, get them to work, and then. Uh, I'm I'm cutting them out at, at work. We've got a machine that does like the like the I don't know what you call it, the like vinyl cutting or whatever. Yeah. So like one of those cricket machines. Right, right. Um, so, and then I'm trying to get it to line up to cut these stickers out and they're all off center. And I'm just, every single one I waste, it's like, oh man, that's a, that's another one down the drain, you know? And yeah. it just takes a while to, you know, you just, sometimes you just got to figure that stuff out. You just got to think about Einstein, you know, or yeah, not, yeah. not Einstein, um, Edison, you know, on the light bulb. It took yeah. how many tries to, to get it so that's kind of how I feel but it is fun once you finally kind of get something and you learn it yeah. you know like and it's it's exciting like now with window painting I'm so far beyond all that that yeah it's yeah. like like sculpting to me is my new my new challenge and my new stuff and I'm like people will look at my stuff and say oh you're really good sculptor but you know compared to all the sculptors in the world that have ever lived I don't think I'm that great you know and that's kind of how I look at it you know is a you know I, I judge myself against that as far as window painters I am like the top 10 on the planet I mean 
for creativity and just doing it and and it feels comfortable and i feel fine saying that too you know but it comes from painting you know seventy thousand windows yeah. yeah you know and, and a lot and, of those, I, I, the, those uh those moments like of the of creating the light bulb where you like try something on a window it doesn't work it screws up you waste a lot of money you got an angry client you know i'm sure there was a lot of that early on to get to where you are you know like a lot of yeah, kind of yeah, or they change colors or do stupid things, and, and yeah, it, but now I just seek out certain people that let me do whatever I want. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think that's it's that's really uh, that's really something to think about as far as like you, what you've achieved with your window painting. I mean, being like the top 10 there are and having so many hours and so many jobs behind you and and you've reached sort of that pinnacle but to you it's like that's not enough i reached that but now i want to try something else you know and I've yeah, gotta, I've gotta that. That yeah it's kind of like when michael jordan you know he was the best at basketball and so he reached that point so he's like well maybe i'll try baseball and he never achieved it as anything near what he did with basketball but why not give it a shot you know try some other things you've you've already kind of mastered one thing so why you know be complacent just move on and, and right try the next thing yeah i like learning and i i you know i well because all my life i've been so anxious i had a lot of anxiety i i you know i might something might have broke and i needed some duct tape to fix it but instead of using duct tape i use scotch tape and then because I used scotch tape on it, it broke more, and then it cost me because this fell out, and I didn't use this. I didn't use the flathead screwdriver. Instead, I used a toothpick or something. And yeah. <laughs> I'm too anxious to. I'm not analytical. I'm very anxious. I'm very right-brained, and so I've wasted so much money and so much time. And probably the reason I'm not more uh, well-off financially, based on my abilities in certain areas, is because because i i don't follow through and i don't go a to b and stuff like that so it's kind of exciting in my life now because i get older my brain is slowing down it's like frank zappa i don't know how old he lived to be but he was a lot more radical when he was 25 than when he was 55. you know when you get older and it changes you know in your 60s or whatever your brain naturally slows down anyway and changes and I'm kind of enjoying it because now I can just kind of slow down and use the right tools and you know and learn and learn stuff. Yeah. And I really want to learn. You know, I want to learn. I really do want to learn anatomy and 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 the bones and because it's exciting. It's not like it's a chore. It's just it's exciting. It's like a it's like an experience, you know, and I never felt like that to me before. It was just mentally painful to to try to really sit down and learn to draw or to sculpt. And and now it's exciting. It's like it's crazy. It's it's kind of like when you're in school, you know, and you're in science class, you're like, this is bullshit, you know, and you don't want to be there learning about the stars or whatever. But as you get older, that changes and you. Yeah. You, it's it's like the same thing, but that's how I feel about drawing, I like drawing, and I just feel like I'm beginning to learn how to draw. Yeah, and, and, and that'll change too. I mean, I'm never going to arrive really, but <clears throat> that attitude of having of being a the eternal student, and I and with window painting too, I'm always learning stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm learning and getting faster and better at it, but. It is good to know that that I've arrived at that. I mean, that is one thing I did arrive at is is being, you know, a really good window painter, and I love teaching it. And it's fun. So is that kind of like, like what's interesting? Like, you know, when you got into it, did you know you'd arrive at that, or is this just something that's kind of naturally happened from from just doing it a lot? Yeah, it just developed. I think probably I felt really like, okay, I'm good at this. <laughs> like a few years ago, I probably was like, because sometimes I'll do something that's like, 
I'll 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 leave and I'll come back and I'll or I'll drive by and I'll go what the what the hell <laughs> that is amazing I mean I could really openly see it objectively and like go okay that's just that's not really just a window painting that's like a full blown you know that's the illustration that's yeah that's creative that's you know and you know the layout the design and the color and everything's right about it yeah, yeah. your type is really good too like, yeah and i just and it's it's fun to have that you know and, and not to have to seek it anymore yeah you know because i was so bad in the beginning my stuff was so bad i used to get my uh, uh my brother-in-law he was he's a lot younger he was 14 audrey's brother I used to get him to draw the hands on the characters when I painted windows because I, I couldn't draw hands at all. And he did a little bit of comic book stuff. He's, he's 14. And, but my mind couldn't do stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't look. I couldn't, I couldn't calm down. I couldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't take the time to like look, you know, which for you is probably a odd concept because you're kind of in a way you're kind of the opposite i mean your stuff is so intricate and, and exacting and and but at the same time it's very creative and but it's it's accurate and it's you know it's cool it's like i'm i was like so mentally lazy for years like you know i couldn't do stuff artistically that you guys are doing you know I mean, the stuff that you guys do, there's stuff I can't do that you guys do because that's what you do. You know what I mean? It's like what you spent your time doing. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, I mean, as far as technically, you know, there's stuff I can't do, like certain perspective and certain things. But right now, I'm just kind of more interested in the in the human body rather than perspective and that, but I think that I think that's a pretty like apt description. Okay, so like there's a bunch of stuff that I want to unpack a little bit that you talked about because it's like the um the idea of being like a constant student. I think is huge because it's like I think some of the so like I have to hire freelancers a lot with like in art direction. And it's like. Some of the worst freelancers I've hired are the ones who think they're great. Like, and, and I mean, like, <laughs> like they think they're great to the point where if you give feedback and it's like it's not your feedback, it's literally if we're working for a client. This is what the client wants, right. and they're so stubborn about making any change, and and not meaning like, and not for the right reasons. Like the right reasons, like. As an, at least from my point of view, as an art director, it's like if you've got a great design, I'll fight for it. You know, like, but if it, but if, if if it's got like problems, it, it's like it's so important to like be open to learning. And I think it's cool that like as somebody who's such a pro at what you do, like like you are like the best window painter I've seen. You know. And and like for somebody who's that much of a pro to just be like still saying you're learning, I think that's so like such a good message for for um, anybody who's starting out. Yeah. Like, never stop learning. Never stop being open to learning and getting better. You know, don't listen to feedback that's bullshit. You know, but like, but I mean, like it, it's always good to like be learning, and I think that's cool. I also think it's funny that you're saying like. That, that you're discussing like something you're you're mastering even this far in to your career because like I think that is kind of what it is to be an artist like you tackle one thing you get it nailed and then it's like it's not as fun unless you're tackling something new like anatomy like that and then you get once you get anatomy down you're going to be on to something else you know like right it's a never-ending journey and that's kind of the fun of art is like it it is like, it is kind of like the fun part of science, you know. Yeah, um, like have you seen, have you seen those guys that do the um, people that do silicone sculptures, like positives of of people and things, and they look 
totally realistic and they punch yeah. the hairs in their face. Oh, yeah. And they, you know, they color, they use like translucent silicone. And like there's this guy named Jesse Rubin. I bought a, he's on DeviantArt, but I bought a, it's, they sell Giclee prints of people's art on DeviantArt. And he's got a photograph of, uh, of a sculpture he did. And he's got his thumb next to it. You know, the sculpture and the head's a little bit bigger than the thumb. Okay. And the, the face that he did is totally, totally realistic. And, and I, you know, I talked to him about it and stuff. And he says he uses, uh, for the stubble on the face, he uses eraser crumbs. What? <laughs> yeah. And I guess he, I don't know how he glues them or attaches them to the face, the silicone face. But they're like, if you, if, if you didn't see a thumb there next to the head, you would think this is a real person. You wouldn't even for a second not know. And so those people just blow me away. And I go on YouTube and I watch these people and I don't really want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that especially, but I just think it's so incredible that they're so dedicated. And like this one guy's from Mexico, forget his name. And he spends like three or four months on like a tiny little two inch head. But they're like, yeah. they're silicone and they're, you know, the eyes are glass and it's just, it's the hair is real human hair and it's punched hair. Every, they punch every little hair Amazing. and they trim the eyebrows. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's kind of a new art. It's kind of a new thing I've been seeing. And uh, there's a guy that's really famous that does it. And he does. Uh, he does, he does yeah. Yeah. Name, I don't know what his name is. I can't remember his name, but, but he does big stuff like, like a pregnant woman that's like giant or, you know, or just, but that yeah. to me, that stuff is inspiring. And so when people say, Oh, you're such a good sculptor, you know, I just go, yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> but yeah. I know what you're talking about because some people that aren't even that good at all, like not even as good as a sculptor as me aspire to, and those people never get good because they don't, they think they're good already. So they, why would they want to improve? Because they're already good. Yeah. But as a window painter or a sculptor or whatever I do, if I, you know, even though I say, oh, I'm one of the top 10, I could, I could be even better as a window painter because I don't have to go against somebody else. I could expand my knowledge yeah no knowledge and compete with myself in a way which is what i do i don't and i don't really compete anyway i just do stuff and sometimes i just knock stuff out but i'm working on some stuff now that's really elaborate and it's new and i'm slowing down my mind and i'm making myself paint stuff that's more elaborate and getting into cross hatching and getting into like instead of painting a tree with only you know three shades of green i'm using five shades of green or something you know i'm i'm yeah. just just trying to get better and better but yeah i i've run into window painters that are just crap and, <laughs> then, and then they talk to me i mean this is like years ago I, local people and they would come up to me and they talk like they talk to me like oh well, you're really good at the cartooning stuff, but I'm really good at this, you know, and we're just good in different ways. And I want to tell them, no, you're not that good, period. Uh -huh. You know, but you can't say that and you got to let them have what they have. But if, if you're not honest with yourself and your ability as an artist, you can't improve. At the same time, you got to acknowledge part of what you are good at. Yeah, like if you are in the top 10 of your of your field, there's nothing wrong with objectively knowing that, you know, in fact, that'll actually keep you advancing forward because you'll be like, okay, I might be here, but I know I can be here, but it's pretty cool being here, you know? Yeah, I really only, I actually only consider, I, I just say the top 10, but I only, I only know one other person that I think is better than me as a window painter, you know, and the rest are kind of, we're equal, we would be equals. You know what I mean? We just have different styles. But yeah, there's this one guy, Nick Barber. He's just mind blowing. Cause I'm, and he can, do, and there's probably stuff he, that I do that he, he wouldn't or can't do, 
but I don't really look at it that way because there's definitely stuff he does that I cannot do. Yeah. And I don't have the mental technical skill as an artist to do that. I mean, he paints like we we'll paint a realistic Santa Claus standing next to a realistic Coke machine with the Coca-Cola logo, and it's like my brain would explode. Yeah. But then I I paint people riding alligators and flying and crazy, you know. So it's kind of different. But I I just look up to him. I think he's really, you know, he's done a lot. You know, yeah. just mind blowing. But and at the same time, it's like saying, you know, I'm. I'm the the best long distance running red haired guy uh, that's six foot <laughs> two that wears green shoes this side of the Mississippi when you're saying you're the best window painter, you know, because it's like how many window painters are there? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So in that respect, I think like, so it's like, um, so like what this is making me think of is like, um, uh, on, on the like being aware of like your positives and stuff is like so I, I just applied for like the, the National Cartoonist Society and I got in and the whole time I was waiting to hear back I was expecting rejection I kind of went into this the last art cast group, but I was expecting rejection because I wasn't looking at like where I was at, at as an artist I was just looking at laurels you know, so I was like, I don't have a Caldecott, I don't, <laughs> I don't have like a syndication, you know, and the, and the people <laughs> there are like heavy hitters, they have like movie deals, you know. Yeah. Um, but when I objectively looked at it, like just objectively stood, stood back and looked at my own work, I was like, okay, I'm not in the talk at all. Like there's guys who can draw circles around me in this group, which is great. You want to be around like to me as an artist, I want to be around and inspired by people who are better than me. I want to be in a room. I don't want to be the best in the room, you know. But, but, um, but there's, you know, like there's a lot of guys where I'm like, I'm totally where they're at, like skill wise. Right. I may not be where they're at, like, you know, with 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 the words and and whatever. But but my skill level's definitely gotten to a point where I can fit in there. And I'm not out of place as an artist. But I definitely have play, like I have a, a ways to go before I get to where I want to be. Yeah. So, uh, but like I think it's so important to do that because like like I said for weeks I had just kind of almost written myself off for like all the work I put into getting to where I am at. You know, because um, like it, I think if you're wired a certain way, like me, I'm more of a negative person about my own art, and so I tend to just be like. No, no, no! I don't even fit in that class, you know. Yeah. Because um, I'm looking at like the the thumb I drew off, or like the the bad like foreshortening that I do occasionally, or or like the cheated background that I silhouetted, or whatever, you know. I'm not yeah. looking at all the strengths and the, the, the challenges I've tackled and the things I've learned. So I think that's really good to be able to object. But I think that's part of this student thing too. Is like, you know. To be an eternal student doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean you can't be aware of your strengths, you know. Um, I don't know. But, like, the best guys that I, I've had work work for me, like, when, it, when I've had to hire people, like, or artists or illustrators, is, like, are people who are, like, good, they're aware of their strengths, but they're aware of their weaknesses, you know. Yeah. And, like, they're working on their weaknesses. And, like, that, if that's, I, th I think... Like for me, that's always inspiring because it reminds me to do that, you know. Because I, I go on both ends of the spectrum where I'll be too cocky or I'll be like way too low about my own art, you know. Yeah, and I'm like that too. Totally. Yeah, because it's a balance thing, you know. And then, uh, but then people come up to me all day. They're like, "Oh my God, you're so amazing!" But then, the people I listen to are the people that are way better than me. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones I'm like all. Oh. I did a mural once. It was a, it was for a gym, a kids' gym. And they had a pool and all kinds of stuff, but it was huge. It was like, I think it was like over 20 feet tall. They had scaffolding and it was a big ocean scene. But I'm really fast. I'm notorious for drawing big and fast. <clears throat> but um, there was a guy there from Dark Horse Comics. That they hired, and all 
<clears throat> what he did was he was on another wall and and all he did was he painted backgrounds but they were the most beautiful like trees and you know and i was just so tripped out he had like vines and the shadows on the trees and the leaves and everything and it's just so beautiful and uh and then i you know i just would paint these big wild characters you know and just these big fish because i was doing like a kind of a fish area with a pirate ship and and but it was interesting because he did what he did and i did what i did you know and we were both working together and it was it was fun and he um there was one part where there was a a waterfall but he couldn't paint the waterfall he didn't know how to do a waterfall he was doing the trees and the rocks and stuff so i had to come in and paint the waterfall i was using an airbrush and this and that and then also <clears throat> i painted a big orangutan and a a gecko with a knapsack i just made up made up the characters against his backgrounds but yeah. It's just like in, you know, like with the Disney stuff. You know, they have people that do the backgrounds. They have people that do the, you know, the storyboards and the, yeah. the coloring and the design. People that design things, and you know, it's the same kind of thing. You know, it's just there's different people have different skills, and but yeah, I think it's great to just keep learning, and striving, and I don't know. I'm just excited. I feel, I feel like a little kid again. I'm going back to school to to learn something and learn how to draw and and really learn learn things you know it's just like i, I really like this thing i've been working on it's really kind of cool this lady i've been just you know and there's a lot of off spots and stuff but i'm getting in like the clavicles and before so. i didn't do anything all i did was the head but now i'm actually you know doing doing the scapula and different parts of it and i'm trying to figure it out and i i see where some of it's off still and i'm working on it but i've got my reference and and it, it's it's like an exciting adventure because i can do this now whereas before it's like my brain wouldn't like i said before my brain wouldn't let me do this huh. yeah it's like it, before it was about money yeah that's why i stuck with window painting it's like how fast can i paint their window and how cheap can i do it and in and out and but now i'm doing the more elaborate stuff but yeah that's 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 inspiring though because it's like i don't know it's just that's very cool and i i also like um my mind's blown because anytime it comes to like technical stuff like making molds or anything like that like my mind just has trouble processing it you know um because there is so much experimentation involved in just getting to the point where you can cast something effectively. Like, I, I think, <laughs> I think I, I'm, I'm frightened of that idea. <laughs> it scares me, actually. Just to go into like the third, the three dimensions, like it's kind of a, that's intimidating too, you know? <laughs> well, certain things I can do, you know, like initially, everything I put on my art cars was it was a one part plaster mold, a flat mold. It was simple. I did a sculpture, it had a flat back to it because I was gonna glue it to the car. It wasn't in the round, it wasn't a full like statue, you know, with arms and, yeah. you know, and so it was easy. I would do these sculptures of faces and weird characters and that's basically all I did. And so I would do these and I would use, uh, you know, oil-based clay and then I would make you know, or I would use super sculpy, but I wouldn't bake it. And then I would just put plaster over it, make a plaster mold. And then I dig out the original, I ruin the original. And then I pour in latex rubber, same way they make Halloween masks. That, yeah. stuff's, that stuff's easy. Is it? Oh yeah, it's super easy. Anybody could learn that in a few hours. But, huh. when, but when you're using silicone rubber and it's gotta be like, a certain percentage like grams of part a and part b and you've got to like make sure you're not using clay with sulfur in it and you and you've got to follow these directions some people can do that but i'm one of those people that when it gets complicated it's just 
freaks my brain out or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> some way. <laughs> but now I am learning. Like right now, I've got a mold on. It's a one and a half scale head of a skull. It's a like this this skull here that I showed you earlier. This one, this skull is more realistic. It's more. It's a female skull, and it's it's more of a an actual like. If you saw this in the dirt, you know you might think it was. A yeah, it's a more, you know, anatomically correct. But this skull I'm working on out there is an exaggeration. You know, the brow line is pointed down. It looks like Iron Maiden album cover kind of skull. Yeah, it's exaggerated. The skull is longer, and you know, I took artistic license with it. But I'm making a mold of that right now, and I had some problems with it. Some. Some parts of it weren't curing, and you know it's taken me a long time, but I think it's going to work. I started to peel off some of the bottom to see if it was setting underneath, and it was. So I'm excited it's going to work. But by the time I'm done, I'll be into it about probably about four hundred dollars just for this skull head. Wow. Yeah. You know, so when you when you mess it up, it's like <laughs> it's it's annoying. It's an expensive lesson to learn yeah but then again it's like like i said before it's like thomas edison it's like how many you know i i try to back off from it and say okay i i, I wasted 150 dollars on materials you know but i'm i'm learning i wish i was more analytical and i wish i was more you know uh left-brained and you know had that stuff going on but then if i had that maybe i wouldn't be as wild and crazy with the window painting or as free or i don't know yeah so I, I also think there's it there's advantages too because i've noticed like people are like really super analytical when it comes to like let's say you do everything by the book and the mold still doesn't work out how frustrating is that you know i mean like yeah. uh, it, I think, and it, and that happens because we're human beings, and and also because like you know entropy, so things don't always work. Like even if you follow every right you know, book, so I actually think like kind of a little bit of the rule breaking, it's almost necessary. Like I didn't I didn't know what I was doing with comics or cartooning when I started doing this stuff. Like I, I figured it out. I started with sharpies and kind of worked my way to the traditional stuff. You know, I think if I had started with the traditional stuff, like, yeah, I think it would have been a disaster, and it would have been a really expensive disaster. You know, so I don't know. I think people are just wired different ways. I I do know some artists though who are like, and writers, particularly writers, um, I tend to think like that's that's a harder way to be a writer is if you map everything like to the point where you have everything color coded and you have all the points in the story figured out. By the time that happens, you know, you might find that ten years have gone by and you have a nice story structure, <laughs> like a no story. But yeah, no feeling, no yeah, no appeal. It's not appealing or. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So I don't know. I, I think leave that the, the technical stuff to committees when it comes to personal art. You know. Yeah, community. but with some stuff, it does have to do with actual. You gotta know. Kind of what you're doing, like, yeah. like right now. I'm right now. I'm being totally anal about making molds. It's like I have to take part A, and this stuff is sticky, gooey, and weird. And I've got to wear gloves, but then I got to push the timer on the, not the timer, but the button that, you know, like you got to put your thing on the scale, and then yeah. you got to push a button, and then it goes back to zero with the thing in the scale. Then I got to pour in part A silicone to 200 grams exactly and i'm pouring it in oh shit it's 220 then i gotta pick that up i gotta pour that back oh now it's 180 okay i gotta pick this back up pour it back in because there's probably some really smart way to do it but i don't yeah. know so i gotta do this stupid way and so i pour it back and forth back and forth finally you get to 200 grams i take off that so then i gotta do part b so i gotta put in you know to every 100 grams of part A, I got to put in 10 grams of part B. So I did 200, so I got to put in 20 grams of part B. So I pour it in, it goes to 40, and then I pour it out, and it goes to 12, and then I pour it in, it goes to 22. 
you know, and I go <laughs> every time I do this, you know, I got to put another layer of silicone. I got to mix up another batch. I got to make sure that I'm so anal that it's got to be 200 parts of the A and 20 parts of the B. It can't be, you know, 19 of the B. That's how crazy I'm being about it, where I don't want to screw up and I'm slowing down to really try to learn. So at least if it messes up, I know it's not because I put in, you know, 18 grams instead of yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah. Because it has to be done by weight. You know, yeah, yeah. But, but then I find out there's another silicone where it's just one to one mixture. <laughs> I don't get it. Just thinking about it, like I just numbers, like numbers, math. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah, I, I think we're. It sounds like we're all three in that same kind of boat. But I don't know. It, it's getting. I mean, we're getting close to like two hours, so we might have to put a pin in it. Um, oh wow! But yeah, <laughs> time flies, man. We had some good conversations. So, I mean, we'll definitely have you have you on again, Scott. But I don't know if there, is there anything that you wanted to wrap up with or anything. Uh, just to tell people, you know, if there's anybody around or if anybody watches this in, in a future time when it's not live, to go to my YouTube channel, Dark Ride Nightmare on Wheels, and you know, subscribe, check it out. It'll show the process of me, you know converting my van into it with a more horror theme and uh it, it'll get more and more interesting as i go along especially when i start driving it driving it around town it should you know i'll get video of people's reaction and talk to people and, but yeah it's yeah. going to be a fun channel i saw i saw a few people in the chat saying that they were subscribing while they were listening so um oh, great yeah, and, I, and we've got <laughs> we we do have links in the uh in the description for both of Scott's channels, both the window painting and the dark right channel. So you can just go there and, and click on those and, and subscribe to both of them if you haven't already. But uh, so what about you, Josh? What's going on with you? Where can they find you? Uh, so you can find me by just looking up Josh McCampbell on YouTube or uh, if you want the direct link, you can just go to Polly Nothing. Um, and uh, check out quarterlystories.com where I post these crazy, silly graphic novel pages that I've been working on for a couple of years. <laughs> and um, uh, also, I, I really want to reiterate, like, you should go to Dark Ride Nightmare on Wheels and subscribe. I'm subscribed. I love it. Um, the window painting channel is great, too. But I actually prefer the Dark Ride stuff because it's like... It's just so outside of my wheelhouse. It's really fascinating to see like molds being cast, and it's awesome. There's a lot of like really cool horror themes to it and stuff. So, um, and like the sculptures, like I can't reiterate enough, like how like you guys have seen a little bit here, but really impressive, amazing stuff. So yeah, go go check that out and subscribe as well. Yeah, and it's funny how different both of your channels are, Scott, because it's. You've got the, the, the window <laughs> painting that's so sunny and happy and the dark I just want to learn how to paint windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Dark Ride. Ah. <laughs> so if you want to see a total dichotomy, you got to definitely get subscribed to both of Scott's channels. But, um, but anyway, so as far as me, you're on my channel, so you know where to find me. Um, uh, the only other thing that I would – Pitch is uh, my online store. You can go to madsciencesupplycompany.com or just cirqueworks.com and there's a store link there. And I've got some new products on there. I've got um, I've got some buttons and I've got t-shirts and I, I may have my test tubes, which are my blind box. I know I've got them. I don't know if they're both on my Etsy and my store envy, but anyway, anyway, that stuff's up there if you want to check that out. Um, and as far as this show, the way this show works, if you're not familiar, is that it rotates between Josh's channel and my channel, and then you know we always have the we always have a third chair guest popping in. Um, but uh, and if you want to if you want to know how to figure out where it's going to be, where the next episode is going to be, if it's on Josh's channel or when it's going to air or anything like that, then subscribe to our newsletter. And there is a link in the, also in the description for that. And uh, we don't spam you or anything. We just sent out usually about 30 minutes beforehand. We'll send out a little newsletter so you guys can click on that and find us where we're at. So, uh, so yeah, so that, that, I think that's going to wrap up another episode of Artcasters. Any last words before I log out, guys? I'm all good. That was great.
All right. Uh, thanks again for everyone in the chat. It looked like there might have been some uh, some technical difficulties, like people said they weren't alerted and things like that, and they were joining the chat late. So I don't know what that's all about, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can catch it on the replay if you weren't in the chat. But thanks for the comments and everything. We appreciate those, and uh, we will see you guys next week. All right. Later. Later.